Hi everyone, welcome back to DIY with Danica. For today's tutorial, we will be taking my bare kitchen windows and making some nice window treatments for them. I recently had my kitchen remodeled and it is very white and gray, which I love, um, but I purposely had these two colors, white and gray, because I wanted the color to come in with my soft finishings. So by soft finishings, I mean like my curtains, my chair cushions, my flowers and other things like that. So today's tutorial, I'm going to be finally addressing this window and these windows as well. And I am going to be making a valance for the windows that's just gonna go across the top. I don't want curtains that come all the way down. That's not, doesn't go with the feel of my kitchen, but I definitely want them to have some color to them. And I want them to be interchangeable. So nothing that's gonna be permanent. As you can see, my wall all the way up to the top is tiled. So I specifically asked the contractor not to drill um, a curtain rod in there because I had this idea that I would make a valance that would attach to the top of the shades. So that's what we're going to be working on today. This wall, however, um, I am going to be attaching some curtain rods to and still I'm not going to be making full length curtains. I'm just going to be making the valance. So Let's get started. Our first step for this project is going to be to iron our material. And that's important because you don't wanna make any cuts on a piece of material that's wrinkled because when you get to the end of your project, you might find that your measurements are off. I love this material. Gonna bring a pop of color to my kitchen. Once you've ironed your material, it's important that you have your measurements for your window down correctly before you do any cutting. So for my kitchen window, the measurement in width is 31 and 3 8 inch, and I'm only doing a valance, so I don't need the fabric to go the whole length of the window. So for that one, I want about a 10 inch length on my valance. However, I cannot cut it at 10 inches. I wanna make sure that I leave at least two inches at the top so that I can fold and get a one inch um, seam or hem, and then another two inches at the bottom. So for my length, I'm actually going to be cutting 14 inches length, but I am gonna to stick to the 31 and 3 eighths inch width. Now, I have a piece of fabric and it can be a challenge to make sure you have it cut um, without it being crooked, without the bottom being uneven. So I came up with the solution to make sure that I get my um, hem space and my side space correct, hopefully, fingers crossed. I haven't seen this done before, it just popped in my head, but we're gonna give it a try. So normally, working with fabric, I would measure with a flexible tape measure. This one doesn't have um, three eighths on it. Well, it might, but it's not marked. So I'm going to use my tape measure instead because that's what I use to measure the window. Instead of measuring from the very end of my fabric, I'm actually going to use this painter's tape because I want to make sure I leave at least this much space in order to hem the, um, the valance when I'm done. So I figure this is a perfect amount of space. It's not going to mess up the fabric. If I didn't have this, I might be using a piece of chalk in order to mark out my measurements because chalk can easily wipe off of the fabric without messing up your fabric. So keep that in mind. You might Actually, that's the normal way to do it, but I just can't find my chalk, so painter's tape it is. I'm gonna start by putting my painter's tape on the edge of the fabric. And that is perfect enough for me. 
Then I cut that. And I'm going to do the same with the top. That way I can put a mark on the painter's tape without having to mark onto the fabric. Very tip. Okay. I'm gonna make sure that this is more than the 31 and 3 eighths inches that I need. And it is, so I can stop there with my painter's tape. Now remember, I said I want my length to be 14 inches, so I'm going to take my tape measure now and I'm going to measure down 14 inches and that does include where I'm gonna fold it over and create a hem. So starting at the top, down 14 inches. And now because I'm using painter's tape on the fabric, I can actually take a marker and mark that 14 inches. I am going to do the same thing for the 31 and 3 eighths inches. Go down. Oops. I'm going to go down 31 and 3 eighths of an inch. One and 3 eighths. So now that I have those two marked, it'll be a little bit more challenging to get the other side and the bottom, but I'm gonna do it. So for that, I'm going to use a pencil because hopefully you won't see it too much since I don't have a piece of chalk. And um, this part that I'm marking is gonna get folded over into the hem anyway. to now take a piece of the painter's tape and follow that line that I've made with my pencil. Hopefully keeping it straight. See, you can't even see that line. And now I can mark on that tape. Not worrying that I'm gonna mess up. And this is where I wanna cut, so I'm gonna put an arrow. So that's the cut line, okay? Now that I've marked 14 inches periodically, I'm going to use this painter's tape and connect those dots. Okay, so now I'm gonna measure and make sure that it's just 14 inches down throughout. It's a miracle, it's straight. Okay, <laughs> it's Sunday, see, I have a miracle on Sunday. Okay, they say measure twice, cut once, so I'm gonna measure one more time just to make sure that my numbers are right. start with this side because I know I need to cut on the inside of the tape for this so just so I don't forget that
Oh wait, 31 and 3 eighths. And I need a hem. Ah, I need to cut on the outside. Okay. Mm. Gonna fix that somehow. piece of fabric that is going to be my balance and I made allowances for the hem on all four sides lots of fabric left now that I have the actual shape of my balance cut out I am going to cut a lining. Yeah, I'm fancy y'all, lining. Um, I normally wouldn't mess with the lining, but because these are going to hang at a window and the sunlight is probably gonna fade my pretty pink and gray design, I'm going to give it a try putting on a lining. I do happen to have some lining fabric left over from a dress um, that I made many years ago. And I am simply going to, oh, it fits so perfectly. I'm going to put this on the inside of the orange and it fits perfectly right there. And I am gonna use that orange as a guide for my cutting so that when I fold this over, it's going to, um, I don't say get stuck in a hem, but it's gonna be a part of the hem. And this is doubled, so I'm just gonna leave it doubled for now and I will make adjustments later. But this orange painter's tape is going to be a good guide for me in terms of my cutting of my lining. So I'm just eyeballing this as I do a lot of things. I wonder if I can just tear it. Hmm. Yay, I did it. Clap for me, everybody. All right, that is perfect. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Now the fun part. I am going to use my fusible bonding web in order to help make the hem without sewing. I know a lot of times you guys see the sewing machine in the background while I'm doing my videos. Yes, I do know how to sew. I have sewn dresses and purses and um, shirts and things like that. However, it is not my favorite thing to do and I don't enjoy messing with getting the bobbin on and threading it under the plate and it's a lot. So I'm going to give this a try for my first time. Fingers crossed that it goes well. Wish me luck. And again, I left that orange on there to make an allowance for this. To help me with my fusible bonding. If I can just find the starting point. Hello. Maybe I should read the directions. Okay, instructions. Oh, and by the way, I picked this up at Joann's Fabrics. And the price is not on here, but you know I don't buy expensive stuff, so it wasn't too expensive. Let's see, place a fusible bonding web between fabric layers. Cover with a damp press cloth. Set steam iron on wool and press for 10 seconds on each side. Do not slide the iron. 
and allow to cool. Okay, I just gotta get it to open. I feel like I'm gonna make a mistake. Oh, I did it. Okay, I think. So I flipped my fabric to the other side, took my lining, or I'm taking my lining, and I'm going to lay it onto the fabric. I am going to take the fusible bond. And we just talked about the importance of ironing things. I think I'm gonna go iron this first. Be right back, okay? I'm back. I have measured, no, I have ironed my fabrics one more time. I am going to take a little piece of that fusing bond and I'm gonna use it to fix this area where I accidentally cut where I should not have cut. So this is gonna be my test of the power of the fusing bond. And I put just the littlest piece of fabric, found a little piece of fabric, and I brought my iron in here this time. And I'm just gonna hold it down. I was supposed to use steam, huh? Well, we're gonna see if it works without the steam because I hate putting water in my iron. Am I the only one? Like, I feel like it gives like a mildewy kind of smell to the clothes or something like that. I might need to actually take this into the bedroom where the ironing board is. So hopefully I don't have to, but we'll see. And it also said don't slide the iron, didn't it? But he said it was only going to need 10 seconds. It's not working. Maybe I need the steam. It's possible that that is not fusing because I don't have any steam. Like I said, I don't like putting water into my iron. So I am going to get a piece of cheesecloth and wet it and have that be my steam and hopefully it will finally work. Oh my gosh, that's not working. <sighs> okay, so that is not working. <sighs> I lied, I'm gonna sew, gonna sew this, so sad. I'm gonna sew, I'm gonna sew everybody. <laughs> I can't believe it. Shoot. Okay, since I'm gonna sew, I'm gonna take this tape off and start using my push pins to hold the hem in place. Once I actually start sewing, it's gonna be so fast, but the headache is just getting started with the sewing. So right now I am pinning my hem for this balance. And this painter's tape is making it very easy to make sure that that hem is straight. So at least something worked for me today. As I go, I'm peeling back the tape and replacing it with a push pin, a straight pin. Okay. They're called straight pins. I keep calling it push pins, but it's really a straight pin. So now this is actually ready for the sewing machine. However, I need to make two more for my other windows and I really would hate to um, take out the sewing machine and do all that for just one. So through the power of YouTube magic, I am gonna come back and have all three ready. I'll spare you the tediousness of that. I have pinned all three of my curtains. One, two, and three. Um, fingers crossed that the sewing will actually go smoothly now that I have everything pinned. 
I am ready to get started. So you'll notice that my pins, and I'll try to put it close for you. I'm not sure if you can see, but my pins are all going in one direction. And as I move the fabric through the sewing machine, some people sew over the pins and don't have any issue with that. I don't like to do that because sometimes the needle in the sewing machine can hit one of those pins and it'll break your needle. And then you have to go through a whole process of changing the needle in the sewing machine. That's not something I wanna do. So I always sew slowly so that I can take the pins out as I'm approaching each of, um, as my sewing machine approaches each pin. So here we go. This is the first time I've sewn anything for you guys on YouTube. Fingers crossed, wish me luck. When you're first starting to sew, you usually wanna sew in one direction, forward and then backwards, and then back forward again, just to make sure that you secure your, your um, stitch into the fabric and it won't unravel. So that's what I'm gonna do first. Here we go. button go backwards So far, so good. Take out some more needles. Okay, I'm coming up to another needle. So I need to Pull it out and I'm coming to a corner so I'm gonna have to turn One more side on this one and I will be done. Okay. 
So that's one down and two to go. Now these two are going to actually go over my corner window. And when I sew them, I am going to make sure that I leave a wide enough gap for the rod that needs to go through these at that window. Okay, everything is ironed and I have one last thing to do before I put up the curtains. If you remember the window over the sink is tiled, the whole wall is tiled and I did not want my contractor to drill into the wall to put up a curtain rod because I didn't know if I would always want curtains over that window. So my idea for how to get the balance above the kitchen sink above that window is to use Velcro. So I purchased this Velcro at Home Depot for about $3. It is self-adhesive, so it's sticky on both sides, and it is made for heavy duty things. So this could hold a flashlight onto a toolbox or hold a hammer onto something. So actually using it to hold this piece of fabric onto my mini blinds or they're not mini blinds, onto my blinds, is not going to be a problem at all. I am going to cut small pieces of it and attach it to this balance. And then I will attach that to the blinds. to take this to the kitchen and finally attach. So here we are at the window above the sink. The way, and as you can see, this wall is completely tiled. It doesn't have a bar for the curtain um, drilled into it. So my way of getting around that, like I said, is going to be to use Velcro. One way that I can make sure that the Velcro pieces are aligned perfectly is to attach them while they are still um, on the fabric, take off the sticky backing, and then attach them that way. So take a look. We see the Velcro. I'm going to take this hook side, take the plastic off, attach it, and then I'm going to put it up that way. Okay, sorry I couldn't show you very well how I was putting that up. Don't have anyone hold the camera for me today, but I am very happy with how this balance turned out. I didn't want anything that was gonna have a lot of ruffles or anything, cause I just really wanted a straight, sleek kind of look because I feel like my kitchen has that kind of sleek look now so next i am going to put the curtains over the corner windows so that was a really long um, diy for me at least i did way more than i've ever done on youtube but i'm very proud of how it came out if you look behind me you can see the balance that i made for the window above my kitchen sink and if you take a look over here, you can see the curtain balances that I made for the corner window. And I think they came out really good. They helped give my kitchen a pop of color. It wasn't too hard. I do have a little bit of sewing background. I was really trying to not have to sew on this project. I wanted to use that um, fusible bond for some reason didn't work for me. If you are um, a more experienced sewer and you know what I did wrong, please let me know in the comments because I do want to use that fusible bond eventually and I wanna be successful with it. But for now, I'm just so pleased with the outcome of the curtains. They're so cute, I love it, I love it. I would have never thought that I could do this. I probably feel like I can't do it again, but I did it. And if I can do it, 
you can do it. If you like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe. I promise I am gonna learn how to insert the little subscribe button, I promise. But until then, here's my subscribe stick. Please subscribe, tell a friend, and thank you guys for watching. Bye.